Today is Tuesday, August 11th. Scary stuff in today's readings, obedience and humility. But good things as well, the sweetness of God's promise and the chance to be childlike in the midst of life's craziness. God is quite emphatic with Ezekiel in the first reading. Obey me when I speak to you. Be not rebellious like this Israelite house of rebellion, but open your mouth and eat what I shall give you. Earlier in the same chapter, Ezekiel says, And when the Lord spoke to me, a spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. So the Lord offers Ezekiel a fundamental strengthening and assurance in himself as one created and called by the Lord. Having this experience, Ezekiel can now serve the Lord's purpose by speaking out against Israel's rebelliousness. And though the message is one of lamentation, wailing, and woe, his being called to deliver this message is sweet. Why is obedience so hard for us to hear, much less to do? We all have our stories from our families, schooling, workplaces, and the church. Obedience is onerous if the one demanding obedience has not set us on our feet first. Imagine how healthy our country could be if our fellow citizens ceased being rebellious and wore masks and observed social distancing. 80% of Americans wear masks in public, according to polling. Why do 20% rebel with verbal and emotional violence? Why do some men threaten gun violence? I can only guess that they come from circumstances, family, schooling, workplace, where obedience is coerced obedience in behavior and action in which they have not felt set on their feet. If they come from a family and a culture that claims to be Christian, then their Christian upbringing has failed them too. To say this all in another way, Ezekiel demonstrates what Jesus calls the humility of a child. He was humble, and we can be humble. In other words, we can live in the truth of who we are if we know we have value in ourselves and if we know that our calling has meaning. Why is humility, like obedience, so hard? Because we haven't had these fundamental experiences. God promises us sweetness in our lives. First, he sets us on our feet. Then he sends us off to speak the truth to power and work for justice. He then gives us a sense of well-being in the midst of the fury that will engulf us, and we will have helped to him to build his kingdom, which is the sweetest work of all.